All right, kiddos, welcome back. As you recall, we just were continuing writing electron configurations. I showed you a little bit about how to write a noble gas shorthand electron configuration, and we were doing dot pictures, weren't we? And we ended with the element nitrogen. Well, let's go ahead and erase that one, and let's move on ahead to the next element. In fact, why don't you go ahead and try that by yourselves? So try to try doing the electron configuration for oxygen, the noble gas configuration for oxygen, and its dot picture. So pause the video now, go for it, see how you do. Alrighty, welcome back. Oxygen has eight electrons, doesn't it? Alrighty. So let's go back to our notes here. We know that one, two, three, four, five, the first seven are going to do this, right? Just like, oops, just like we had for nitrogen. But the eighth one's going to start to pair up, isn't it? And that now no longer have full sublevel. So oxygen's 1s2, 2s2, 2p1, 2, 3, 2p4. If I were to write the shorthand notation, I would put the noble gas before oxygen, which is still helium in brackets, and then just write the rest of the configuration 2s2, 2p4. All right, how many valence electrons does it have? If you said four, you are wrong. If you said six, you are right. Valence electrons are the electrons located in the highest energy level, which is the second energy level in this case. So I'm going to have six dots around the element oxygen. So I'm going to put the symbol for oxygen, and I have a pair and another pair, don't I? Don't I have two pairs? A pair and a pair, and these two are by themselves. So I'm going to put one here and one down there. So if you did something like that for the dot picture of oxygen, Good job. Now some of you may have done this. You may have put an oxygen symbol there, put a pair over here, a pair over there, one up top and one on the bottom. And that's okay too. Just so long as you have two pairs and two by themselves for the element oxygen, showing that in the orbital filling diagram we have two pairs and two by themselves. Okay, let's move on to the next element now. And why don't you go ahead and do the electron configurations for fluorine and neon. You can do the full configuration, then the noble gas configuration, and draw the dot picture for both. So pause the video now and try those. Okay, welcome back. Atomic number nine, fluorine, that ninth electron kiddos, is going to go right there. So it's going to end with uh, 2p, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2p, 5, correct? All right, so it looks like it has seven valence electrons. So we're going to put the symbol for fluorine here. Looks like I have one, two, three pairs and one by itself. One, two, three pairs and one by itself. So that would be the dot picture for the element fluorine. Okay, the next element that you had to do was neon with 10 electrons. So that 10th electron kiddos is going to go right there. And so its configuration with, it would end with 2p6, true story, 2, 4, 6, yep, 2p6. So it has eight valence electrons, doesn't it? So we're going to put the symbol for that element, neon. And let's take a look. We have one, two, three, four pairs in its outermost level. One, two, three, four pairs in its outermost level. So that's the dot picture for neon. Now you might be a little bit nervous at this point because you're wondering, well, geez, Mr. Hummer, what about the next element? What, what, what about when I add another electron? I'm going to run out of space here. I have four sides. I have four pairs. Where am I going to put that ninth electron? Don't worry everything's under control. Let's take a look and see what that next element is. The next element is the element sodium with 11 electrons. Remember, as we go down the group, or down my periodic table, every time I go down a row, I end up gaining an energy level. So if you remember, sodium will end with three, and this is called the S block, remember kiddos, one. So the next electron Let's erase all of, all of this over here, okay, kiddos? The next electron would be right here in the 3s1. So its full configuration would be 1s2, 2s2, 
2p6, 3s1, the noble gas configuration for the element sodium would be all of this written as the noble gas before the element we're interested in, which is, remember, neon. So what I could do instead is put neon in brackets and then just write the end of the configuration for sodium, 3s1. Now it's easily seen how many valence electrons it has. It's got one valence electron and it's all by itself. So the dot picture for sodium is just one dot. And you're done with it. It was that easy. Okay? Try the next element on your own and then come back to the video. Okay? Welcome back. The next element is magnesium with 12 electrons. Hold it in with 3. This is my S block. 2. So we're going to put a second electron there. Let's get my eraser out. Get rid of that. That. We'll erase all of this. Okay? And so now the element we're interested in now is magnesium, Mg. So we're going to put Mg, and it ends with 3s2, doesn't it? 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. And so those 3s2, they're paired up, and so that's the dot picture for the element magnesium. And we're on our way again. The next element is aluminum with 13 electrons. So we know that where that 13th is going to go. It's going to go right there. So it's going to end with 3s2, uh, 3p1, 3s2, 3p1. And you notice it has three valence electrons. Two of those are paired and one, by its, and one is by itself. So the element, once again, is aluminum. So we have Al and we have a pair and one by itself. Okay? Go ahead now and do the next one, two, three, four, five elements without my help. Go all the way through argon without my help. See how you do. Okay? Alrighty. Welcome back, folks. I'm not going to do silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine. I'm going to jump right to argon for you with 18 electrons, kiddos. 18. So, so far we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13. When we go 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay? So, the configuration for argon would be uh, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, right? And we have eight valence electrons, don't we? So we have the element we're interested in again, which is argon, AR, and we have one, two, three, four pairs. One, two, three, four. We've reached that four pair again. Now I hope you're not worried about where the next electron's going to go. No, you're not worried, because aren't we going to start a new row again? Absolutely. If you take a look at the next element, the next element we're interested in after argon is atomic number 19, and that is the element potassium. And don't we start a new row with the element potassium? One and with 4s1. And so, oh, and so, let's go back to our notes here. The next element will end with 4s1. Let's go ahead and erase some things here. Like, let's erase this entire configuration because we have a new noble gas now, don't we? The noble gas before the element we're interested in is argon. Okay, so we can put argon in brackets, which would be saying 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, then 4s1. So the element potassium just has one dot next to it we've got it. The next element is the element calcium with 20 electrons. Of course that electron is going to go right there. It's going to end with 4s2. True story. And they're paired up. So we have calcium with a pair of electrons next to it. And that's the dot picture for calcium. Alrighty. Now the next element is scandium with 21 electrons. You'll notice now after calcium, 4s2, there's no longer this big gap like we had between magnesium and aluminum. We start running into these 10 elements here. Now the reason we do that, folks, is because after the 4s is full, we start filling up the 3d. So, scandium ends up being 3d1. 
Now I know that sounds a bit strange. So let me help you understand this by giving you a little bit of a metaphor or analogy. Okay? Now let's pretend you have two friends. One of those friends lives 100 yards away. The other friend lives 50 yards away. If you wanted to go visit one, and you were really lazy that day, and you wanted to spend the least amount of energy uh, possible, wouldn't you go see the one that's closer, only 50 yards away? Yeah. Electrons are sort of kind of like that. They like to go to the lowest energy first. But what if I told you this? The one that was 100 yards away was straight down the street. But the one that was 50 yards away was straight up a sheer cliff. You had to climb a ladder to get to her house. Now which friend would you go see? The one that's closer? No, you would go see the one that's farther away. Why? Because she would be easier to get to. She's farther away, but it takes less energy to get there. That's sort of what happens with electrons. After the 3P is full, an electron could have chosen to go to the 3D. Now remember, a D orbital is really, really hard to make. It's that cloverleaf-shaped orbital. That's a tough wave pattern. The 4S is farther away, but an S orbital is really easy to make. It's a lazy spherical orbital. So what the electrons do is the first two, when we fill up, after we fill up the 3P, go to the 4S because it's easier to make, farther away, and then they start going to the 3D. So that brings up the question, what is the dot picture for scantium going to look like? Well, it's going to end with 4S2, 3D1, 3D, oops, got the eraser on there, sorry. 4s2, 3d1. How many valence electrons does it have? If you said 1, you're wrong. You forgot what a valence electron is. Remember, valence electrons are the electrons that are farthest away from the nucleus. Not the ones that entered the atom last, but the ones that are farthest away. And wouldn't that be the fourth energy level? Yeah, there are two electrons there. So scandium's dot picture would have two electrons, and as you notice, they are paired up. So that would be the dot picture for the element scandium. Now you might be onto something here. What about the element titanium with 22 electrons? 22. Well, let's see. Won't that 22nd electron go right there? So it would end with 3d2, wouldn't it? So titanium's dot picture would have two dots in it, not those two. Remember, that's closer to the nucleus than the fourth energy level. These two electrons would still be the valence electrons. So titanium's dot picture would look like that. What about the next element? Vanadium with 23 electrons. Well, let's see. The 23rd electron is going to go right there. So its configuration would end with 3d3. Okay, the element again is vanadium, V. Draw what you think the dot picture would look like. Okay, if you drew two dots just like that, perfect. You've been listening. Remember, we want the valence electrons, not the ones that entered the atom last. So vanadium also has a dot picture with a pair of electrons next to it. Okay, you getting on, you catching on to this? Alrighty, well, I think we've actually covered quite a bit of our notes. We've talked about the Aufbau principle at the bottom of this page, folks. Um, we've talked about Hund's rule. We've done electron configurations and orbital diagrams for the first 10 elements. We've talked about electron dot structures. And, huh, I think we've drawn at least electron dot, uh, uh, electron dot structures for at least the first 10 elements below. So, this is where we're going to pick up on the next video. We're going to redraw those uh, electron dot pictures for the first 10 elements and see if we can start to see a pattern. I hope you see it with me. And we'll talk to you then. Bye-bye.